after almost two months of walking and living of white food or gifts from generous villagers, we reached the Upper Nile region and there our problems multiplied. An excerpt from page 69 of The Port Fire Lost from the Sky, the true story of three lost boys from Sudan. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and to the review of The Port Fire Lost from the Sky by Harley Benson Deng, Benson Deng, Benjamin Ajak with Judy A. Bexton. This is a fantastic memoir that had me pulled in. It is a great memoir that I find the scenarios of the event that the authors passed through quite unbelievable, so heart-wrenching, so horrifying and terrible to the highs. If you've ever heard about the 1983 Sudan Civil War and the stories of thousands of lost boys that were accommodated in some refugee part in South Africa like the Kenya and Ethiopia, and if you've ever heard about how some of them migrated from Sudan to the United States, then this is a fantastic story that you should read that detail the life experience of some of the survivors and those who died on the road. The Port Fire on Us from the Sky is a true life story of the authors Halefenson, Benson and, and Benjamin. Our war tore them apart, you know, leaving their families separated. Our war had a drastic effect on them and how it changed their lives. While I read the book, I have a lot of things coming into my mind. I was imagining the book a different way, in different method. You know, as a philosopher, I asked myself quite a lot of questions about the reality of the event that surround Halefens and Deng and Benjamin and also Benson. What they pass through is so horrifying that I will never wish that for my enemies. Ever since I've been reading memoir, this is the best memoir that I've ever read. You know, when you're looking for stories that pull you into the ocean of your own emotion, it's a story that I consider would be a thoughtful preservation of the history of the people of Sudan and the African community at large. It's a story that, in my own perception, talk a bit about the causes and the effect of the Sudan civil war on the citizens of Sudan and also the role that the International Rescue Committee and the United Nations have to play in the 1983 Sudan civil war. So this book actually detailed the lives of the author Halefan Sundeng, Vincent Deng and Benjamin Ajak vibing a brutal war in their country. I love the way the book started. I love the way the authors made us to have a look into what their life is while they were in the village before the sudden invasion, before the sudden attack, and before the sudden news of war hit them unexpectedly. The people of Sudan, more specifically in Joe, are mostly farmers Cultureras and it does some other rural occupation. And here, yeah, I love the way the authors made us to look into the African community when there was no war, as in the situation of their village during its peaceful period. And here, yeah, all the authors were able to make me paint image because I'm an African man and I love to say I specifically love the way all of them paint image of an African village, the activities of an African village and the sort of feature that define them more particularly. When I read through some part of the story, I realized that, oh, this is not only particular in Sudan alone. It is something that is particular also in the Nigerian community. So they all live peacefully. They live with love. They live caring for one another before war pursued them out of their land, torn them apart, whereby you have fathers cannot find their son anymore, whereby you have mothers mourning the death of their daughters, whereby you have some other people, most especially the women and the daughters, being taken into slavery. Some were killed and some were raped. 
is a terrible event in the people of Joel. It's an outrenching attack on the people of Joel. And here, I love the way the author described the invasion of these people who had come to burn the old. You know, some of them were burnt alive inside the old, and most of them they were able to flee had it in a terrible manner. There are a lot of characters told by the perception of different authors in the book. One that I would love to mention is a story of a call that is written from Aleph some point of view. Akol is actually the friend of Ali Fenson. He loves her and there is particular day when the attack came and people were throwing bombs and shooting and the attack died down. Alefo went back to check in Akol's house. He saw the dead body of Akol on the floor coupled with other family members and he cannot just help but shed tears. When he get to know about the death of Akko, it was heart wrenching on him. This attack actually came based on a kind of a law by the government of Sudan, whereby they were trying to impose religion on some certain people in the country. And these people always come from a side of the country to this particular area of the Joe to steal their cartoons and to try and convert them into Islam. You know, there are other reasons that lead to the war, like race, religion, ethnical problem, and oil. However, while I read this book, while I read through the pain, the agony, the heart-wrenching experiences that this innocent boy passed through surviving the terrible war of the 1983 Sudan Civil War, it had me imagining and questioning reality that these are children who knows nothing about oil, who knows nothing about race, who have no problem with ethnical differences, then why are they made to suffer the dead? Also, the account of the Wuharili attack on the villagers made me to imagine how barbaric we still have this problem whereby you have some people trying to import their religion on certain people. You know, I think that religion should be a free way of life without anybody imposing laws whatsoever. However, the attack of the Muharilings on the villagers made me remember the recent doubt of the brother Samuel who was recently stoned to death and burned into ashes just for alleged blasphemy of Prophet Muhammad in northern Nigeria. You know, this is an act that I think some people in Africa are yet to understand the real definition of religion is the greatest act of inhumanity and unbelievable act. Weird that, especially in our current century. So, as the boys fled their land, escaping bullets, escaping bombs, the war made them to embark on a journey that they are yet to understand. You know, this is a journey that is full of hostility, full of, you know, starvation, full of heart-wrenching events, full of compassion, full of anger, and quite a lot of things. I myself cannot even imagine a trekking a long distance, not to talk about people trekking thousands of miles, moving all the way from Sudan. Sometimes they cross to the River Nile and again back on their journey, moving all through to Utopia. And from Utopia, they keep trekking all the way, moving from one part to the other until they arrived in the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. You can imagine the thousands of miles that this young boy trick it's left me feeling astonished I was surprised and absolutely amazed reading through the sort of problem and experience that they've passed through I love to consider it a hell on heart experience tracking the long journey is not the only issue they are through and there's a map towards the beginning part of the book that detail the journey of Alefo and the journey of Benson with one on tick line and the other on dotted line and I was like can you imagine someone trekking this long journey this is something that a plane ought to do just like I recited in the SF section of the review where Benson wrote that after almost two months of walking and leaving off wild food or gift from generous villagers we reach the upper Nile region and there a problem multiplied. You know, there are lots of issues, lots of difficult situations that these boys pass through. At first, they walk 
on barefoot. That alone is a different thing. And again, most of them do not even have clothes. Most of them have to trip naked. While some were lucky to have a short sleeve on themselves and a short knicker. When I was reading the book, I was imagining how were they able to survive the scorching sun, you know, trekking through the Sahara Desert without water, without eating. It is very, very sad. I was like, how can that even be possible? And even the fact that they're going to do this again and rest to the night. Sometimes they rest inside bush, you know, living in fear. That's why some of them were killed by lion. That's why some of them were killed by crocodiles. Yeah, that reminds me. The author wrote that when they were trying to cross the river Nile, that the experience crossing river Nile was very horrendous because Mosquito apart, some of the boys were killed by crocodiles, swallowed alive by crocodile. And I was like, oh my god, this is very hard. This is heart-wrenching. And one of the things that struck me most is the fact that these boys are young. They are children in the age of seven, six, and nine. Considering how young they are, for them to be able to pass through such kind of difficult, you know, situation brought me to tears when I read the book. Ordinarily, I wouldn't deny the fact that this book made me cry. There are other several other things that are mentioned in the book, and this is how Alifo wrote that they were able to perceive water from a very far distance. You know, when I read this part, I was like, this must have been so hard on them for them to have been able to perceive water from a far distance. They also wrote about when there was no food for them, how they ate leaf and, you know, ate some weird food that they did not even know, they are not familiar with, all in the name of surviving, and how the journey was so tough on them that there were no water, and how one of them suggested that what if they drink their own urine, and that's how they have to resort to drinking their own urine. They poured it inside a container, they drank it and kept the remaining, and as they continued the journey, they were able to utilize the other urine that they have kept. While I read this part, I was like, this is so hard, this is so terrible. And there are some characters in the book that made me shed tears. These are stories of people that were told from Benson's point of view. People like Alia and Mondi. I love the way Benson described the horrific scenario that surrounds their life. You know, one of them is actually a small boy who was very determined, who was persevering, but he couldn't make the journey. He died along the way. And when I read through this part, I felt like writing him an elegy. It's very hard. It's very sad, I felt like crying. That's one thing I love to say about Benson's style of writing. To me, his style of writing resembled that of the famous Chino Achebe. And I love the way his word is able to allow me to paint image in my head as I read through it. Benson has a style. His writing style is very gloomy. He has a way of, you know, subtly and craftily containing the pain and the agony of thousands of lost boys. I love his use of idiomatic expression. I love his writing style. I love his choice of way. Very simple, easy to understand, and very, very great. It's wet. It's like a voyage that contains the lamentation, the pain, and the agony of thousands of lost boys. He's a writer that I admire so much. He's a writer that I love so much. Also love Alefo's point of view. Alefo, to me, is kind of writing it's somewhat comical, but yet sad. Some of the scenarios that I find quite comical about his writing is a point whereby he wrote where our people are calling him a stone head and how they laughed at him and also how he was very afraid while he was driving in the lorry. People were, you know, matching his feet. He wrote that he was quite afraid and scared that his leg would break before they arrived at the destination. Well, this is actually very funny, but as you keep reading the line, you know that it's actually not a, not a funny story. It is very sad. It is, you know, so wrenching. It is evocating. And it's for sure one of those fantastic memoirs that I've ever read. I live for style of writing too. It's very hard that at some point I began to imagine if he had the most 
horrific event or experience among the other writers. So as a philosopher, while I read through this book, I began to think differently. I began to imagine differently. You know, I love asking some questions, but I began to understand and realize that no matter how hard a situation may be, those who will survive it will definitely survive it. And those who would not survive it, sadly, would not survive it. Because Aleppo, for instance, slept among dead bodies, pretending as if he was dead. And he was even kicked by an army. Had he breathed at that time, he would have died. And we might have not even get to hear about his story. You know, when I read through this pack, I know that Aleppo himself is a young and intelligent boy. He's very, very smart because he realized that he was in a very terrible situation. He has seen people fall down by bomb explosion. He has seen people die by bullet. And he was very keen to feign as if he was dead among other dead bodies. The same Aleppo was met by a lion while they were sitting down in the wilderness, you know, resting. Because while they were joining, whenever they get to a place that seems a bit cool for them, they would relax and rest and continue the next day. So in this part, Aleppo was met by a lion. The lion sneaks his face and left him to kill another boy. I'm not trying to say that the boys have an unfortunate end, but as a philosopher, the book had me thinking very hard. It had me imagining, questioning life, questioning faith, questioning some scenarios that got me thinking on and on. You know, the same Aleppo was starved, vulnerable, sick at some point, yet he overcame it. Even the death of his colleague should have stopped him, should have discouraged him from continuing in his journey. Because even old men and women died, much less a young, helpless boy. You know, while I read through this story, especially with that of Aleppo and Benson, I was pulled in and I said to myself, I'd rather never give up in my life. Despite the fact that this book is very sad, so wrenching, is you know captivating. I found a great deal of inspiration. I found a great deal of motivation because even while Aleppo was passing through those hard, difficult situations in the wilderness in Africa, he had no idea that a crown was waiting for him in America. Did he even know that he's going to write a book, a bestseller of a story? You know, the book left me feeling contemplative as I began to imagine it, the part of life, the difficulty encounter and the success afterward. It's a pain mostly if you read through the story of all the boys, those who could not survive it, like Bondi and Aliyah. There's a part whereby I think Aliyah had trekked a lot of journey and now is exhausted his energy. He does not have water. While I read through this book, I began to understand the importance of water, that it's very available to us here and can be scarce in some certain location. Because it's because of water that some people died. Some people died of starvation. And there's a part that the author made reference to skull found in the sand of the desert. And you know, this part actually pulled me in that I had to write a DH to mourn the soul of the lost boys of Sudan, to mourn the soul of those people who could not make it alive, to mourn the soul of the people who could not survive the journey. There are sad words, especially from those characters that Dex Podent has told from Benson's point of view. People like Monde, people like Alia. I remember reading a part when one of them fell down when they were about to get to Kenya coming from Utopia and this person actually fell down because there's no water and his word as told by Benson point of view made me cry. How he told them that even if they find his dead body they should please put a drop in his ear perhaps it can come back to life. You know there are lots of agonic words there from different points of view and I love to say that even the writing style of the book itself truly made for an interesting discussion. It truly made for an interesting read. And I give this book a 5 over 5 star review. It owns my sincere and heartfelt recommendation. You know, there is much to say about this book, but I don't want to talk about everything in entirety. I just want to give you a short video book recommendation for you to have an idea of what is contained in this fantastic 
Tiefu Memo that I had me captivated until I finished indulging my emotions in it. I consider this book to be a thoughtful resource towards the preservation of the history of the people of Sudan and Africa at large. It also expounds on the impotence and the role that the UN and the IRC have to play in the 1983 Sudan Civil War. I have quite a lot of questions to ask about this book. The book left me with so many imaginations, so many questions, you know, dropping through my mind that I earnestly desire to have an answer to. You know, I don't want to talk about the book in entirety. I just want to give you a short video book recommendation for you to have an idea of what is contained in Elephants and Den. Benson Dink and Benjamin's The Poured Fire on Us from the Sky is a fantastic book. It's heart wrenching, it's inspiring, it's tearful. And if you are the one that is not so much familiar with history in Sudan, I'm pretty sure you'll love to pick up this book. If you're a lover of memoir, if you're a lover of autobiography, or if you're a lover of literature at large, this book is going to pique your interest and if you ever want to know more about the stories of the lost boys of Sudan then I recommend you getting a copy of The Port Fire on Us from the Sky. So this is where I'm going to stop my review of this book. If you're yet to click on the subscribe button, I want to urge you to please click on the subscribe button over there. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you can get notified anytime I release new videos. Thank you very much for watching my short video book recommendation of The Poor Fire on Us from the Sky. It's a story that is beyond my description. It's a story that is beyond imagination. It is very, very great. It is brilliant. It is powerfully written just for you to go out there and check it out. Thank you very much for watching. See you in my next video. Goodbye.